Excellent. Thank you, Leanne. Thank you, Steve. Um, first, I want to say this is like Christmas to me. I've been working on this project for 11 years, and I really have not felt like I could talk a lot about it, and you'll understand why, I'm sure, as I, as I progress a little bit. Uh, but I am so excited to share it and pass it on, and um, thank you, Steve, for uh, helping with that. Peggy LaPointe, I want to say a special thanks to. She came to me and asked me to do this presentation, and I agreed, and then I thought, man, I don't want to have to recreate the wheel because before you understand Denton County um, and what we've got going on, you have to understand what the IMTs are and, you know, the background, the history, are they real, all the questions that Steve covered. So I called Steve and he agreed to do the first half and I'm going to do the next 40 seconds. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> all right, so today's agenda. We're going to cover the history of the project and then getting involved and, um, you know, one of the first things everybody introduces themselves and, why, and kind of establishes why you should listen. And this is Steve's. I got nothing. <laughs> I, I got nothing. I have a passion for it. I love Native American history. Um, I have a deep desire to, to, to do all this and a design. Annoying desire to understand everything that doesn't always make sense and affinity for playing in the dirt. But the very most important is this, and that means that all of y'all are now also qualified uh, because I'm a very passionate lover of the Elm Fork chapter of the Texas Master Nationalist. We have the greatest group, and honestly, this has just become like it's my family. Coming back in January after being gone a couple of years was just Wow, I couldn't believe how many people came up. They cared, and I'm like, God, I didn't even know anybody knew I was gone. And mom, for you, a Girl Scout also. So, and Katie Hammond, so big Girl Scout. Okay, so I think I skipped. So how did this start? I'm in my training class. We've got a lot of people in training class right now, 30-plus people. Um, and Courtney Blevins, who's coming to speak on, isn't he, darling? He's a sweetheart. Um, he, uh, he was talking about the trees and you know, forestry stuff. And when he finished, I asked him a question. This was my class of 2004. I was like, Courtney, there's this weird shaped tree. It's by my house. I pass it all the time every time I'm coming here. It drives me nuts. And uh, what would cause it? Because it does not make sense to me as far as tree growth grows. It doesn't look normal. Well, he's like, well, it sounds like you found an IMT. But I've never seen one, and I'm not sure. There might be one documented in Texas, but I'm not even positive about that. So he sent me to a Texas Tree Trail site, and I filled out this nomination. And I didn't get squat. I, <laughs> and I am not a patient person. I have a lot of good characteristics. Patience is not one of them. So I waited, and... and uh, in the meantime, questions show up, and I'm out on the trails on my horse, and I keep seeing other weird trees. Well, now I'm just like, okay. Now I feel like I'm being chased by tree, weird trees or something. <laughs> and I was never, like, passionate about trees. I like trees. Trees are great. All of nature's great. I, anything in the dirt I'm good with. So um, these are kind of a quick list of the questions that came up. What is it? What do they look like? How are they used? I, I didn't understand any of it. And um, so I started doing a little digging um, just locally. And I say that because I lived in Copper Canyon, four and a quarter square miles, not a big place to do research. If you're going to do it, somebody's going to know something. And uh, most, of me, most of them knew me. I had, was run for mayor. And so uh, <laughs> to try to stop development, if you want, must know, but anyway, I started searching, and this talked a lot about the history on the website. So any of y'all can do this if you're interested. Go to your website. Start looking. Just Google some stuff, you know. So I, there are lots of other websites here, and I'm really speeding through this, I, but we need to get through it. So word spreads. Hey, Leanne's doing whatever. Uh, so I got a call from the paper saying, can you write an article? I'm like, what the heck, man? I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm in a class. I'm just trying to look up stuff. Whatever. Okay, I will. If it, if it helps maybe stop the developers, uh, all right. So I put, this is the first one that got me in all this mess. 
And then a couple of others. I think this is from the Mountain Steward and examples there. But I wrote the little thing, the little, little paper, and uh, started getting a lot of contacts from a lot of people, a lot of them really good people, well-intentioned. But there are some scoundrels out there. Where is he? Dave Ford. Dave Ford put a picture of me in the Christmas annual slideshow one year in a compromising position, bending over, looking at dirt, and I told that man I'd get him back one day. <laughs> and not only that, though, he really encouraged me to go forward with my questions and kind of told me what to do, and if you're going to do all this, make it a project. So project was born. I submitted this uh, form to the board, and that was in 2004, and I outlined what my steps were going to be. This is absolutely hysterical. Looking back at it, I'm like, oh my gosh, what an idiot I am. Uh, you have no idea this is how grandiose this is. Um, to investigate as many historical references as possible, okay. Build a complete, unquestionable reference <laughs> training guide. I mean, you know, if I do something, I want it done right. Uh, to date, it had not been done by any group. Nothing was available. Steve's talking about stuff and research that was going on, but everybody's kind of doing their stuff piecemeal and not, not very in tune with each other. And it's a, it's a touchy, sensitive subject for a lot of reasons. You want to protect it, but you want to educate people. How do you do this if you do that? And it's, it's really confusing. So um, I did a lot of library search and, and form a map knowing the natural water resources because I figured that's a real important part with the, and going back to the Peters Colony map that, that uh, Steve discussed earlier and um, try, to, try to track these trees as the Native Americans were uh, roaming Texas. To compile a complete list of submissions of potential marker trees using number one and determine if they meet the qualifications, compile a map of tree trails I need you big time. You weren't even here at the time to, 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 on that. So uh, there's a reason things happen. And then to complete a training manual to train other volunteers so that they could go out and, and do the same thing. Um, so I started looking at the maps, and this tells you a little bit about different great places to go search if you're just interested and want to try to substantiate it. And this is really where Steve's the Texas Historic Tree Commission and um, we need help on the um, on the history of it and that can be courthouses, property records, um, just getting in touch. So I just continued kind of trying to make sense of the weird ones I saw and then I'd look it up. Well, why would this be here and why would that be there? And so I didn't know. The biggest thing that I never saw was personal contact of the Indians. It was always some white dude writing something about something. And I'm like, okay, but where does it say that they're saying this? I get what we say, and that makes sense, but are we just making up some kind of urban legend, or are we not? I mean, it, it's interesting. I, 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 it feels right. Spiritually, it feels like right when you're around them. It makes sense, but that was missing. And so, you know, I got nothing else to do, so I started doing all this stuff going to powwows and contacting tribes, got a tribe reference book, um, looking up artists, just talking to anybody. I've made some of the best friends. Weird, some weird friends, good, good friends. That's within the Master Nationalist. But, no. <laughs> now I go back to Dave on that one. <laughs> uh, so then the paper contacted me again. They had been contacted so many times that they wanted a follow-up article. Well, sure you do. But I still wasn't happy about the party that bees that won and the development that was planned, so I'm like, sure, if I can cause some trouble, I'll, I'll keep it out there. So I, I did a little follow-up. That's not really fun. Yeah, it is. Uh, so I did a little follow-up and it, some info on some of the trees that were submitted after the first one. And my, my email list was blowing up. I, 100 plus every day or two from different, just crazy. I'm like, you didn't tell me you're putting this stuff on the web, you know? <laughs> it's a little bitty paper. She said, our coverage is X. We'll keep it to X. So no, it's, it was on the web. So I start getting 
contacted, like I'm some kind of professional here. Um, I got by individuals thinking I have a cool tree. That's wonderful. That's great. Um, organizations. I had heard from each of the people that Steve mentioned, and I'm horrible with names. It didn't mean a thing to me when he was saying, oh, the mountain stewards and the this and the that, until I started going back through my records, and I'm like, oh, crap, I've talked to all these people. <laughs> every single one of them, Don Wells, Downs, mountain <laughs> stewards, everyone had contacted me, and a lot of them I quit returning. They were too far away, and they wanted something that I wasn't willing to, to, to give, um, which was the information, because it, it just, I wasn't comfortable with it yet. So this is one that I found, and I'm afraid that this one is destroyed. Um, we're still in search of it. Things have changed along that line, but that is in Flower Mound, and that is me back then, that short white hair. Um, this is another one, uh, Irving. Um, not Irving, Flower Mound. Um, he showed you the book, so we won't go into this, but just kind of digging anywhere, any and everywhere. And I'm telling you all this just as much because in this group, if you have a passion, just follow it. You know, you're going to, there's a lot of great topics that are covered. Um, you can spread yourself too thin, not do anybody any good. I did not want to get involved. This was not my idea to get involved with trees. They got involved with me. They just follow me around. I can't help it. So that has become, this has become my passion, but it wasn't intended. So I kept on uh, attending powwows and trying to meet people. And, it's like it's like Steve said, you know, a lot of the Indians, they would talk to you, and you could tell in their eyes, they, you'd ask them, and they're like, hmm. Yeah, like, here we go, another white girl asking me about something that I am not going to tell her. <laughs> and some of them would tell you a little bit, or that they had heard about them from their grandfather, but they didn't have anything written. Well, no, because we made them burn everything. So, of course, they don't have it written, because we told them they couldn't. But they, they you know, I've, I've, uh, it's been very bits and pieces but man, it's a journey. It's, you know, I want all the answers, and I want them now, and then I want it done. And so I can check that and go to my next project, and that is just not, not how it's happened, and it's been glorious. Um, so it's ended up with travel. I just got back uh, spending a couple of weeks going um, through Arizona, New Mexico, Utah, back still meeting tribes, meeting people. Um, it's, it's, I mean, the Comanches certainly, because they were nomads, and when you travel, you need a map. But, um, but it's, it's more than that. And at the very least, it's been worth it just for that fry bread. I mean, fry, good fry bread made by, unbelievable. Okay, so here's, here's where I got where I said no more. Did the third article with some of the trees that had been submitted to me. Um, Continued being contacted, didn't really mind that. What I minded, and I, I say the passion became a burden. Um, not that I didn't love it, and not because I didn't want to work, but because I didn't have the answers that I felt like ethically I could do, and it still, it still be true to um, what the original purpose was. Changing here, um, it's it is really sensitive, and I think y'all get the the conflict. You know, um, I do want everybody to know, and I want them to be looking and documenting and turn them in and doing it um, properly. Uh, unfortunately, um, man, there were people that were wanting me to come testify in court so that their neighbor couldn't cut down a tree, and they wanted immediate certification because their grandkids, blah, blah, for their property value. So it was this, you know, double prong. Thing. So I just decided I was going to continue to look at it, all of them. Anybody that contacted me, I'd continue to look at trees that were turned in, document them, and I am now over. But I kept looking at trees. Um, and I just wasn't going to go into um, anything publicly. So I'm sure the board was like, what the heck, Leanne? Well, they know me. So, well, they don't. They know me enough to know they don't know what I was doing. So uh, I, just could, I just couldn't. So I, it kind of went inactive. I just didn't say anything, and I'd fill out the project reports, you know, no work <laughs> or no advancement or whatever. Um, I put this slide in here because if you look at this bark up here, and you can't see it very good from this picture, but 
sometimes trees that you don't necessarily think would be or could be or old enough or whatever have, have um, petrified. And this tree right here, and, and it's the storytelling tree, is a, such a cool tree. But I was like, Steve, this is rock. I mean, this is, it looks like a, a tree. Limbs are still coming out of parts of it. How can this thing be rock? Well, who knows? I mean, it's a spiritual thing, and I can't, I can't explain. I'm not here to explain it. I'm just here to admire it. So what changed this year? Why am I talking to you? Why am I so excited? Why am I drug back in? I feel like the godfather, they drugged me back in. So in 2004, I, I decided to come back to the group. I'd moved and done some stuff and um, kind of put some things behind me and had more time to to put to this again and frankly I miss my family it's just the one group that I I mean I had tears that day uh, when I came back it's just so many people really mean a lot here to me and that same day this troublemaker right here was speaking and it happened to be on trees and it was something else and at the end he made this remark about Indian marker trees and he said y'all probably don't know much about this this isn't da 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 but uh you know, we do these, and, you, and I'm sitting back there, and I think about 50 pair of eyes turned to look at me in the back. It was like, oh, crap, what's Leanne going to say? <laughs> I'm like, no, you didn't. <laughs> so, um, but it was awesome. It was just fate. I, I, I just, I went home that day, Jean, and was just, could not have been more excited because it was, it was right that I was there that day. It was right that that's the month that I came back. And it was right that I met Steve because he brings the bio. He brings the strength and the, the d degree and the contacts um, so that there's the respect there. I mean, I'm, just, I'm a master naturalist. I'm just projecting stuff I read and off the webs, you know. So um, that was great. I gave him my card. He was busy talking, and his eyes were like, now, what's that about? So we talked, and he's like, I've been looking for you for years. I'm like, he said, you're famous. I'm like, oh, well, <laughs> infamous or famous? I, I don't know. I'm not sure. So anyway, a, a trusting relationship has really been born. It's been several months. We've been trying to, like, hash out how does this work with his and with our project and our love. And the bottom line is we all love him. We're all fascinated by it. Um, this is an amazing group of incredible intelligence in this room humbling intelligence. That's why I don't ever really feel uh, proper to stand up here and speak because we've got some serious talent in this room. But working with Steve and just the big picture of this has been wonderful. And so it, it has strengthened us and it has strengthened, I, I believe we add asset to his, his uh, research and everything as well. So I felt like my questions had kind of been answered. That was another reason. And the impact of both our groups. Well, it's, it, we've, it's impacted us. It's impacted how the project is going to be defined. And I think that as this grows, we'll need to, to um, polish that a little bit. But at the same time, the, the overall scope is the same. Um, we certainly bring really talented, passionate volunteers that will do everything to protect them. Um, and really do care. And then we, we increase, increase theirs as well, I'd like to thank. Um, so today, um, what does a, a member do? Well, Steve went over this quite a bit. The project manager, Steve, um, receives nominations, verifies the info, and then um, sets up a site visit. And at the site visit, you've got tools, you've got a team, preferably a team of three, one to measure, one to photo, one to record, take, take notes. And um, after that, the detailed history in that specific area. So get my, micro, get, get, go look and find out what happened. Talk to some of the old neighbors that have homestead have been there forever. You know, there's, there's people that have been around that have seen the history. Sit down with them and talk to them. And what'd you see? What'd your grandparents see? What'd your great grandparents see? Um, we submit it all and we uh, make sure it still meets the qualifications. If we're blessed, Jimmy or, or one of the other native tribes that we hope to, to establish this kind of relationship with will uh, come see them. And then we, we, we wait for their ruling. Um, Indian Marker Tree nomination form, this is what it looks like. 
Um, we are going to post this nomination form on the website soon, according to Ben. said he didn't mind doing that. I didn't want to do it before today, for sure. Um, however, I say that um, it, it's easy to do. It's easy to fill out. If you don't know something, that's okay. If you don't know the species of the tree or the approximate age or anything, that's okay. Um, but this is what you need to do. You download it, you fill it out, you send it in. Um, for Denton County, we also cover Wise and uh, Cook, and so any of those is still, you know, still we're working on, on this project. Um, this is what a nomination form does not look like. So I get a lot of these, and this is where I got frustrated because I'd be busy, my memory's bad, I get flustered, I go to sleep, it's all erased, and then I have cards with a drawing on the back and a picture with kind of a bad map drawn that I've walked and walked and walked looking for the, this tree and this, couldn't find it. Um, just all kinds of stuff have either been mailed to me, emailed to me, handed to me as I'm talking and somebody will put something in my pocket. I'm like, I, I'm just not that great with, with that kind of, so best to go through the nomination process. <laughs> Okay, Steve talked about what a, not, uh, an IMT looks like. I just added this for funny, but I had told Steve where some were, and I, I couldn't go today, and they'd gone out to, the, uh, to this particular park, and there were three, and he found the first two pretty obviously. He didn't see the third one I was talking to, and that's kind of hard. Well, you go out to these acreages, and there's these three trees, and, you know, walk around looking for them, but this is the best of them. This is the one he thought was my third tree. Like, what is wrong with this picture, Steve? He thought that was real funny. <laughs> so, like, well, I don't know. I'm thinking it's not. But I'm not a commander, so I don't know. But I don't think so. Inspection tools. I, there's a list. These are when you go out in the field. I, I brought what my bag looks like, and I keep this in my trunk all the time just in case. You know, never know when you have an emergency tree attack. So, uh, you know, to sample, you sample the soil, uh, a D tape to measure it appropriately, camera, your tree reference guide, um, the form to fill out on the inspection. So, if you go out as one of our team, um, one of you needs to have all of these items need to be carried by the somebody, <laughs> or at least uh, as a group, you need to have covered that. Um, we can go into detail on that sometime later. Uh, Steve's kind of addressed this, but you're looking at, uh, you know, you want things to scale. You want pictures to scale. Um, if you can't take a tree cookie and there's not a dead limb, you definitely want good measurements as close as you can so you can really get in there and read the, the years, um, which we've done here. And if you can't do that, there are different shellacs or water will help you take, put it on there. It gets wet, you take a picture, that helps the, the, the layers stand out. Uh, could be tea or a stain, whatever. Um, but you're also going to be measuring like the canopy of it. And, and uh, you see us investigating this one, but you, you stand and you measure. You know, you want everything you can on these reports um, and pictures. This is our group kind of out looking at different aspects of it. Um, we measure and we measure and then we measure and then we repeat. So this is kind of the team. We've got our volunteers here, Veronica, uh, Larry, Bill. They've been really great at getting out in the field and getting this training already. So um, this is the inspection form. I don't have much time to go into that, but these are the things that you're looking, looking at on the tree. Um, it's really, it really is important that we use these, these accurate documents and all. And Van, I'm, I'm a little over. I'm close to the end. Shall I continue or shall we stop at results? <laughs> results to date. Um, and uh, thank you uh, for making this map, Ron. I appreciate, appreciate you so much. And um, this is my results to date within the Denton County project. 147 trees have been turned into me. Now, you, you heard S Steve's numbers, and that could mean that mine's a load of crap because uh, people read the little articles and I don't know, they could have been smoking peyote for all I know. I, I don't know. But uh, 87 have either been inspected or were ruled out. You go out and it's a nice tree, but I'm saying that 
breaks your heart to say no when their grandkids are looking at them, but it's, it's not. So 87 are taken care of out of that. Two were uh, re um, previously reported, but they've changed owners, and they don't want us to go back on now, or they're not interested. And the, the um, inspection reports and all that we use uh, under Steve's direction are different, so we, we need to revisit these. Um, four of the trees were located out of state. I had things, and I just quit returning them when they were like that. I didn't have time. And some were clear cut by them. <laughs> Boo. Uh, so, 40, 41, <laughs> you'll see now why people don't ask me to speak publicly because I will, I will get you. 41 still need to be investigated. We have stuff to do. If you want to be on this team, we have stuff to do. We need to get this stuff done. Three need to be located um, because they mailed stuff to me and it's pictures and it's a brief description. And, you know, I think if I put that out amongst a group that's, you know, signed onto the team and can look at them, somebody's going to recognize it. I may not, but it doesn't mean somebody won't. And then six need further contact. The people gave me their name, think I have one, didn't tell me anything about location or tree. So we got some follow-up there. Um, Denton County. Okay, here's my map. Ron, thank you so much for this. This is general enough, but this shows you the ones that we've focused on. And this is, these are for real looked at. Um, so the first thing I get a lot of times is, well, why um, are there so many in one area? Well, I don't know that it's that there's so many in one area. Maybe it is, but there's several things. We do have the historical documentation that the Native Americans were in this specific area. Um, we also know that there are several springs and creeks that are within Copper Canyon. There are some little springs that uh, Gina and I go out and, and photograph stuff, and there are some springs that you, know, you don't ever hear about unless you hang out and talk to people. So we've got that. There was actually a rock quarry, and I took Steve out to show him one thing, and we went up the stream, and he's like, these are like the painted rocks that they got so excited about. So he and I were both excited. Um, and we know that there was a trail that came through here that was just really well tra traveled, and it was down Shin Chapel. But, so we know a lot of what's going on there. Um, and I think it's more that we know about it, and then I put the articles out there, and they haven't been destroyed yet, so we're getting, you know, of course, they haven't been developed. It's going to be different in Dallas, but it's not because they weren't there. It just means developers beat, beat, beat us to it. Um, so that's kind of my response to that is maybe it's more here, maybe because there were some things that really attracted them with water and buffalo and springs and rock and stuff, or maybe we just know about it. I can't answer that. So, all right, um, how to get involved. First of all, if you see anything that you think really is, and now that y'all have been educated so you won't send a bunch of garbage that's a 10-year-old tree that's something that you can go on and you can fill out the nomination form and send it in, and um, we'll have the contact information there to send. Um, or you can join the team, and, you know, if you want to, we'd love to have you. We, the history, I don't think you can have enough people out there digging in their little neighborhoods and getting it. I really don't. So if you'd like to be on that part of the team where you're digging for research, love to have you. But I also understand there's a lot of great projects. If this has been just educational for y'all and encouraging to, to do your own, that's just fine, too. Um, but anybody that's willing to read and research, help out with the admin, help get people out and document this a little better, I'd love to have you on the, on the Denton Project team for sure. Um, so I want to say a special thanks to the board. They've been patient. It's been a, 11 years since I filled that out. And I know at times they were like nothing. Every other projects, and it just, you know, so it was, a, it was wonderful, but they were still supportive to everybody with the Elm Fork. I mean, the response, record attendance today, that tells you. I mean, it's just a, it's a, it's a subject people care about. Peggy for inviting me and Ron for doing the map, and, and certainly all the members and Steve with the THTC and uh, the IMT team, Shirley Holland, and I said Larry and Veronica and Bill earlier, but they've been really active already. Um, and most especially Steve Hauser, because if he had not spoke here that day, if he had not 
agreed to meet with me and shared. And it was both like, well, I'm not telling you anything until you tell me something. Well, I ain't telling you anything either. So it is, wait, I'll tell you one, you tell me one. I'll tell you one, you tell me one. So it's been, it's been fun, and it's just so exciting. And I, I'm just thrilled about it. And, and he's made a huge difference. This year's been amazing. Um, for Mom, just for you. Now you know what I've been doing for 11 years. She's like, I don't really, I want to come hear you because I don't know what you've even been doing for 11 years. <laughs> Mom, if you want to contact me, here's my email. <laughs> I love her to death. I'm just like her. So, the end. It, it, we are 15 over. Um, I'll leave it to you. I'm happy to take questions if... if, if I have two emails. I, my old name, my real name. I've had a little bit of problem with the new one, the Weaver, which is my maiden name. And so the Jernigan's fine. I don't care. Would either one's fine. I kept them. My phone number also. You can call. Uh, happy any time. Nine four zero number. Wait. Maybe I didn't. Okay. This is my number. If you have questions for Lee Ham, hold your hand up and let me come to you so everybody can hear, hear the question. And, and brief, briefly after this, we're going to have a, a, a team a meeting, just 10 minutes really quick because I'm hungry, frankly. And uh, these will wait. If they've lasted 150 years, they'll wait another day. So that's my look on it. But we, I do want to get together see which aspect you're interested in and come up with a firm plan. Fall is the perfect time to do this, to do the investigation, especially because the leaves are off and they're easier to spot. And so if you're interested at all and you want to be a part of it, stick around for about 10 minutes. Do the Indian nations have a record where these trees are? Or are they waiting to y'all find <laughs> They have it. They're sure not coming forward. But that's that's really part of what we want to continue to develop and grow is our network of connections within the tribes and find it because there certainly we know Comanches did, we know Cherokees did it, but we know several others did. But you're talking about being nomads versus the farmers that you're going to have a little bit less use for it. But they still had to go certain times a year and they would trade, so they were going across country. And it, Steve showed you what's thought to be a boundary tree. There were ones that said, don't cross here, you're not welcome. Oklahoma, Texas, don't do it, <laughs> you know. So that answers a little bit. Other questions? Huh? Hold on just a minute. Let me come to you. I did not do it. Yeah. <laughs> I am so impressed. This is so awesome. Um, Thank you. Is Denton County what your primary, this where you want to stay? So oh, that. If somebody else finds something in, like, say, in West Texas. Yeah, yeah. You know, Steve mentioned to forward the nominations to him, and so, and this is still some of the stuff that afterwards we've got to determine where our, pro you know, what is our project. We still want to keep it quiet and all that, and and respectfully be a sub part of, of the the group that Steve has. If you if you sign up for the Texas Historic Tree Commission, you do sign a, a liability release and and a, a confidentiality release, and so you know that that changes stuff. Our as it stands, our project covers Denton, Wise, and Cook County. So, and that's what I was asked to update on today, our project. So, yeah, what, what do you suggest if we see a tree, say, in our neighborhood, and regarding the nomination, do we ask the homeowners to fill out an application? Or you know, I, it, that's, if it's, if it's, Practical to do so, that, that'd be great. If you can, All the information you can get on the form, the better. But if you see one and you can't, take a picture, put the address in, put everything you can in. We'll use you as the contact, and, and, but we would have to be doing that. So if you can't find it, they're not home, we can do some property search things to try to find the owner's name. But we do have to contact them before we go on private property. And that's the big thing is we, we need to respect... We need to respect the, 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 the Indians' history for sure, and we need to not claim things that, 
we're white people saying something that's not true or is true. Uh, it's not our place. But we also need to respect people's privacy, and part of these are open, and part of them are private homes. And that could be an issue. You get your address somewhere, and next thing you know, you have uh, a bunch of people showing up. That wouldn't be too cool. So they wouldn't they wouldn't let us back in anymore. So we we want to make sure we have that respect for sure. Mm -hmm. Dan, Dan, you got one. <laughs> Yeah, the, the bend, and if there's a nose, or you know, obviously the ones that bend this way, you, you, you get the GPS coordinates, and, and you, that's part of the, the inspection form that you fill out. So you got the coordinates in your compass, and you plot, you know, where it is facing. So northeast, well, then if we do the history and we look at old maps and the topography and all, we find out high points water crossings, all the things that Steve so efficiently went through, um, then we can, we can try to figure out some of the stuff that's not being told forthright. <laughs> I'm just curious about those noses you talked about, one or two. Do they do that by scarring it? I mean, is this is on purpose? Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. The, the noses are for sure... Um, an on-purpose thing. They, they did that, um, but it could be packed with mud. There's several different ways that they would have done to make a nose. It is, a, it is intentionally done. So, and that's, we get a lot of those that are the shape where it goes over and then up. And I, my understanding is the, the Comanches are really more of the rainbow one, and you get the, you know, the one up or the two up, sometimes the three up, and a lot of different variations of that. But the one that goes over and then straight up, which seems to be, in looking at the trees we have here, seems to be what I have a greater percentage of. Um, those are more Cherokee, so. More questions? Uh, she, she had a quick question. Are they different species of trees? Y yes, uh, yes. Uh, post oaks are the ones we see, but you have to also think, well, it's hardwoods, and they knew their trees, they knew what would last, and of course they're not going to do something that's, uh, you know, they wouldn't be using Bradford pears, let's just say. <laughs> so, <laughs> none of us should be using Bradford so, pears. So, okay. So, we're looking at trees that would have survived this long, for one, the oaks, and we have a lot of oaks here, so for us, that's it. You know, but you go to other areas, there aren't any trees. They're using rocks, and so, big, so it's, it kind of varies, but depending on what the region is like. For us, it's oaks and pecans are the, the two probably most, but that doesn't mean there's, as Steve said, there's some weird root systems and all. There's the one that I said was like calcified that were, or petrified. It was stonish. Um, so we can't say just an oak or a pecan, but those are the most common that you see. Questions. Thank you, Leanne and Steve. Wonderful presentation. Now we've got another thank you gift for you. No, we got me? we got one for you. Oh wow! I told Bobby, y'all no. Would you come join us? That way you can be part of this. I told him no. Historic event for what's That's been sweet. going on for eleven years. Now I know why she doesn't return my phone calls. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Y'all hear that? She says now. She knows why Leanne doesn't return her phone calls. Don't worry, Mom. This group knows I don't return any of their phone calls. And, <laughs> and if I want her to come see me, I will have to find a bent tree. I'm, I'm on it. I'm, uh, I'm on it if it's a bent tree. We just want to say thank oh, you sweet. very much for That's beautiful. coming and being part of us. And That's we've beautiful. We've got a couple of photographers. And oh, here's our, thank you. Here's our resident photographer today. Beautiful. Yes. Marilyn, thank you so much. It's gorgeous. Marilyn did it. So, oh, she's here. I saw her. Marilyn, there you go. Oh, pretty, there. pretty. It thank matches you. your outfit, Mama. Okay. I'll share you. Thank you. Anything else? Bobby, thank you for coming. And thank you for if anybody wants to come to the powwow next week, Friday, Saturday,